everybody, I'm Natalia Bonner. Welcome to this little bonus live clip today. So you all know I've been over here busy working on my brand new class, finishing up my second, third version of this class sample visual guide to machine quilting quilt blocks. I had so much fun quilting along with all of you. So when I quilted the first version of this quilt, I started playing around with my brand new machine quilting rulers, the Sway rulers, and I quilted this awesome motif down at the bottom of the quilt. And I know a few of you quilted it out already and you've had amazing results, but there were some questions about it. So I decided to hop on here today. Now that I've advanced to that same position down at the bottom of my visual guide to machine quilting quilt box class sample, and I'm going to walk you through the process of marking and quilting that design. Now let me just, I guess, make one thing clear here. I'm probably going to change things up with this design just a hair, but I think you'll still get all of the concepts. The reason that I'm going to change things up just a hair, when I quilted this out originally, I used my Sway 5. After I quilted it out, I decided that I probably would have liked the design a little bit better so I'm going to actually use the Sway 4 here. But we'll show you exactly how I mark out and quilt out this design. And I'll show you options with both the Sway 4 and the Sway 5. So let's get down here and let's get marking. So a few things that you will need. If you would like to enroll in this brand new class, you can at any time. The class name, again, is Visual Guide to Machine Quilting Quilt Blocks. And you can register on our website, peaceandquilt.com. This right here that I'm quilting on is a panel that I designed to go along with this class. The panel, if you're interested in using it, is available for purchase through honestfabrics.com. So you'll hop over to their website to get that. I am using the largest size panel, which I believe is about 88 by 104 inches. So it's a large panel, but that's the only size that you can use if you want the large 12 inch blocks like I'm doing here. If you use the smaller panels, then your blocks are going to be smaller. This area is going to be smaller, so you will have to adjust all of your designs. But that's okay. Real quilts, you have to be adaptable. So the next materials that I'm going to be using here, I need a long ruler with a straight edge to do some marking. I'm also going to use a shorter ruler just because I'm crazy. Um, I will be doing all of my marking using the blue Mark Be Gone marker. I've had great success with this marker, so personally, it's my favorite. Whenever you're using it, make sure that your markings are 100% removed from your quilt top before you ever apply any heat. I like to use mm, our Peace and Quilt Misting Spray Bottles to mist away my mark lines. I love instant gratification, so usually I'm misting away you know, once I complete a design and advance through my quilt. Now my rulers. I have three brand new machine quilting rulers that are called the Sway 5. Can you see that there? Mm -hmm. Let me put down towards the head. Is that a little, a little bit better? Oh. So this is the Sway 5. Then we also have the Sway 4. And we also have the Sway 3. These rulers are flying off our shelves faster than we can blink. So if you are interested, hop over to our website. You can take advantage of pre-order pricing now and get on the list. We'll get them to you as soon as we can get them. But a few fun things about these sway rulers. I've designed them to mark and quilt whatever size number is on the ruler circle. So this is the sway four. It's designed to mark and quilt four inch circles and of course a straight line because you all know I love a good straight line. All right, so let's stitch out and or plan out and then we'll stitch out this design. I'm going to start with my long ruler. The reason I'm choosing a long ruler is because I'm going to mark a long straight line right through the center of this border. On this border, because I have the flying geese over here at both ends, makes it a little bit easy. I don't actually have to measure the border. I know that that's the center. So I'll use my blue Mark Be Gone marker and I'm going to mark a straight line right through the center of that border. That ruler is really long, so that's the only place that I'm going to use it for. Next thing that I'm going to do, again, is find the center on my border. So I could measure across this whole border to figure it out. I like keeping things really simple over here. I know that this section right here 
is the center of my quilt. So all I need to do is find the center of that section, make sure that my ruler is straight, and then I'm going to mark another straight line right through this section. So there is a T through the center of my open space. Okay, so the first time I quilted this out, I used the Sway 5 to mark out my design and quilt my design. Now, when you're quilting with any of these rulers, this circle right here, the large circle on all of the Sway rulers, is designed to quilt out a five inch circle. So I don't want to mark this circle because I'm going to be quilting a quarter of an inch around the outside of the circle. Anytime you're machine quilting with machine quilting rulers, you've got to also make sure you have the proper tools. Obviously you need machine quilting rulers. Do not use your rotary type rulers to attempt machine quilting with rulers. Most likely you're probably going to break a ruler if you do that. So you're not going to want to mark around the five circle here because that's not a true five inch circle unless you quilt it. This end down here on all of the sway rulers is designed for marking. This is on the sway ruler. You can see, it's hard to see here on camera, but there is a circle marked over here that continues all the way around and that's a five inch circle. There's a straight line right here there's a straight line or a 45 degree angle right here through the ruler. And there's also a straight line right here. Those indicate the center of that circle. So if I wanted to mark a five inch circle with the Sway 5 machine quilting ruler, I am lining this line right here up with my T. I'm lining this line right here. And then I can mark around the outside of this to get that five inch circle. Now, like I said, on the original version of this design, I did use the five. But you can see when I mark this, look how small my space is up here. I want to quilt feathers around this motif. So just by laying it here, I know that circle is probably going to be a little bit larger than what I want. So let's set the Sway 5 aside for now. My recommendation, if you're going to start using the Sway rulers, you probably do want the whole set. I personally, just working with them, have found that I like to use all of them. I recently quilted, you can see the bottom of it here, this churn dash block, and I used the Sway 5 and the Sway 3 to quilt that block and ended up with really fabulous results. Okay, so here I'm laying out the Sway 4. You can see I have a little bit more room. I like that a little bit better, so that's what I'm going to stick with. Now I want to quilt this fun kind of swag design. So I'm going to start out by marking my circles. I'll start here and I'll mark just in quarters. I flip the ruler over and continue to line up that one. Wait, I'm going backwards now. <laughs> Why am I marking this wrong? So with this design, really any of the designs, I'm just starting out and I'm just playing. I know that I want this motif and it'll make more sense as I continue to draw this out, but it's going to be just kind of like a swag that fills in this area. It'll make sense in a minute. But what I'm doing, I'm lining up those two straight lines through the center and I'm marking right along there. So line that up, get marked there. Can line it up over here this way. And I'll continue that circle. Now I could leave it like this. This is the spine that will be quilted using the Sway 4. So now when you see this laid on here, I've lined up that center marking and you can see my quilt line is a quarter of an inch on the outside of that. I'm going to continue marking because I think I want my swag to go over a little bit further. So again, I'm lining this line on the Sway 4. Should I let <laughs> Many of you probably noticed there's a dog block. Come on. 
on this quilt and my cute little friend here is the reason why he likes to come and quilt with me so <laughs> continue lining up those lines and marking out my circle here or my half circles I'm liking that I'm liking the look continue on let's mark it on this side and if you feel like you need to do more markings, more measurements, go ahead. There are no rules. This is simply how I quilt and mark my designs. Okay, so I'm really liking that look. However, I know this is going to be the end of a feather over here on both of these ends. I want it to kind of curl back on itself just a little bit more. So I am going to add one more line. I'm going to only go maybe partially around just to kind of continue that curve. I'll do the same thing over here on this side. So hopefully that makes sense. I started out by marking a T through the center of my block and I'm using the Sway 4 machine quilting ruler here. Using these markings down here, can you see that with my hand behind it a little bit better? Okay, so this straight line right here indicates the center of this four inch circle. So this is like a quarter of a four inch circle, but that right there is the center. You can see with the 45 degree angle right through it. So as I'm marking, I'm marking around where my quilting line will be. Okay, now it's time to start quilting. You know I love feathers and I love dressing up designs with feathers. I'm going to start this one just slightly different from how I quilted the original version. I, because I've already marked these reference points here for my design, I will quilt my spine second. Often when I'm machine quilting, if I've not done this much marking, then I'll go through and use my ruler and quilt my spine first. But here we're going to do it second. So I'll start in the center and this feather, I'm going to make it so that it kind of goes both ways. So there's my starting place, kind of like a figure eight, two little feather teardrops that I've started with. Now from here, it's time to just start playing. You can quilt whatever type of feathers you want on this. I'm just going to have a lot of fun and put a lot of designs into this. Why wouldn't I don't it? think I had a single one all night last night when I was in here quilting and of course as soon as we hop on a live my thread chooses to break I can give them a little close up while you're doing that yeah come Maybe. as close as I feel like you need to so I am stitching here using a Gamel 22 inch machine obviously hand guided quilting I'm stitching in the stitch regulated mode and my stitch length is set at 15 stitches per inch. Personal preference, that's what works best for me, so that's what I'm sticking with. good with hand guided quilting obviously you could hand guide right back along that marked line I'm not that perfect so I'm going to grab my sway for machine quilting ruler and I'm going to stitch right back along that marked line so again the way I've designed this ruler it's to mark and quilt four inch circles so I can hold it on either side 
You'll see when you're machine quilting and get more comfortable machine quilting, it's not always comfortable to hold your hand back here in awkward positions. So I really wanted this ruler to be, or create it so that you could hold it where it is most comfortable the majority of the time. Adjust my ruler. Now I can stitch right along the other side to go around that. So now I have my first side done. I'm going to repeat this process on the same side. So at this point, you could use your sway for machine quilting ruler again and stitch back along that spine. I love heavy quilting. It's my personal opinion. I just love the way it looks. It doesn't mean that's what everybody has to do. Because I love really heavy quilting, a design like this, I know I'm going to quilt a heavy background filler around the outside. So to close the design or kind of bring everything together, I will stitch an echo around the outside of the whole design. So to stitch back here to get started again, I will use my echo stitch instead of traveling back along the spine and getting a really thready buildup, I'll travel back here with that echo stitch. Now I've made it back there. We've got half of the feather all stitched out. Let's finish that second side. stitching out my feathers I'm definitely adding in a variety of bump back feathers playful feathers curl feathers play with your feathers there are no rules you could even add in little things like a leaf
now I have that first side done. Let's grab the Sway 4 machine quilting ruler. Now you can use the markings on here and line those up to get that perfect quarter of an inch. A lot of times I find that I'm just kind of holding it and eyeballing where that position is exactly. Now, back to where we started to finish off this root or this feather. Everybody's finding a little bit of inspiration from this fun little design. Does it feel like they are, Brad? Yeah. And we Making will save this rulers. video. Yeah, you can pick up the Sway Rulers on our website, peaceandquilt.com. They're available for pre-order. They are on sale with pre-order pricing and right now. And you can still enroll in this brand new class, Visual Guide to Machine Quilting Quilt Blocks, over on our website. found just a little bit of inspiration from this video. At this point, I will go through and add that echo stitch all the way around the outside of this design. I'm doing this rainbow filler as my background filler, so I will finish that rainbow filler and I'll have my brand new class sample all done. I hope you're all able to find just a little bit of inspiration from this video. Don't forget on your Sway 4, actually all the Sway machine quilting rulers, they're designed to quilt and mark the size of circle indicated on the ruler. So this is this way for. You'll use this end down here for markings. There's a straight, two straight lines indicating the center, also a 45 degree angle. This is a true four inch circle for marking. These circles right here are perfect for quilting four inch circles. And then of course, down here on all of this way rulers, you have the markings that are or measurements that are designed to measure off of your needle position. So it makes machine quilting circles, swag borders, really the possibilities are endless. I know I've had a few comments already wondering if I'm going to share designs that you can do for people that don't love feathers. Yes, we have many videos in the work that we are going to start sharing on YouTube really soon. So if you haven't, make sure you do also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search my name, Natalia Bonner. Have a great day, everybody.